What's up, guys? It's Josh Engelman for Awesomeo.com, and I just dropped a new NBA article, taking a little bit of a deep dive into the results from the beginning of this NBA season on five and six game slates. Because of the bubble, we're going to be seeing a lot of five and six game slates in the eight remaining games for each team before we get into the playoffs. So I wanted to see, is scoring different at different salary tiers? Is the Do you need to have a higher score to be a top 1% lineup? Um, how much salary is being spent on an average lineup? Is there an ownership issue between high buy-in and low buy-in contests? I wanted to look at it all. And that is what I have in this article. And I think it helps to walk through it a little bit. So in this first table, the first thing that we see, I broke down everything based on buy-in and I'm basically using two tiers. It's the mini max and then whatever the main 150 max lineup contest that existed above that. Uh, sometimes it's $8, sometimes it's 12 or 15. It even gets into the 20s at one point. But basically, what's the big contest? What's the little contest for all the 150 max stuff? And as you can see, scores are sort of comparable in terms of winning the contest. Uh, the average winning score, a bit lower in the cheaper tournaments, gets a little bit higher in the more expensive contests. But the extremes are bigger on both ends for the lower dollar stuff. Not all that surprising. There's going to be weirder lineups, so to speak, in the lesser dollar. So you're increasing the variance, but you're probably bringing your median down. And that's exactly what you're seeing there. Um, the average score being about five points higher in the higher dollar stuff. Now, I don't really think that you should pay attention to the highest score in a contest at all. We talk about it a lot, but to win a GPP, your lineup is deviating from what you expected a lot. It, it's just happened to be positive for you, but it's also not really like a great lineup, so to speak. So what I believe you should be doing is looking at your lineups that would finish in the top 1% of a tournament. I think that you can use that as a better baseline of just understanding how good your lineups are in general. You're going to get into a lot of intricacies in that top 1% where, you know, something gets called an assist, but it actually wasn't or vice versa. There's a lot of randomness in that top 1%. And all you really want to do is be putting yourself in a position to succeed over and over again. Eventually, by putting yourself in that position, you should have more winning lineups. But just the, because of how top heavy everything is, the difference in your ROI between finishing first and third is dramatic, but the lineup itself is essentially the same. And that's what we kind of want to look at. So I looked at the 99th percentile lineups for those contests now. And as you'll see, the average 99th percentile lineup in either the mini max or the greater buy-in contest is the same. They both came in at 328.9. So you're, you're trying to get to that same cutoff. It just so happens that it's a little bit different in terms of the extremes once again. But even still, it's eight tenths of a point in the highest 99th percentile. It's about two points at the low end. So what you really wanna do is get a 1% lineup. That should be your goal. Don't think about it in terms of can this lineup win? It's can this lineup be a 1% lineup? Once you get into that top 1% of all lineups, all bets are off. You're gonna need some bounces to go your way. As you can see in the first line of this, it's not just about your raw points. You need to be aware of how owned a lineup is. Some days are going to be chalkier than others, but in five and six game slates, you can see the extremes. And this is where I thought it was really interesting. Of all the lineups that spend the full salary, the full 50K on DK, in the mini max, the average ownership is 220%. That's each spot individually added up. In the $8 or higher contest, it's only 195%. What we're seeing is significantly less chalky lineups as you move your way up in uh, buy-in rate. That's not surprising to me. You're going to see a lot of heavy, heavy chalk likely overplayed at lower do dollars. You can even see it in the maxes and the mins. 
the max ownership way higher in the mini max style contest with the minimum a bit lower. You're just playing, you're just seeing more and more chalky lineups in the low dollar contest compared to the high dollar contest, but not so fast. I don't necessarily think that it's just straight chalkiness. Obviously adding those numbers together makes a big difference. 220 clearly higher than 195. We know this. But what I think this is actually showing is the construction of a lineup. And I'll elaborate a little bit further. So I wanted to pay close attention to the people that run 150 lineups per contest, particularly in the $8 or higher contest, because these are gonna be the same people over and over and over again. Uh, people that are entering 150 lineups at that level are likely playing this game every day. That's certainly the case in the Minimax as well, but probably a little bit less so. What I did like to see is that the average winning score slightly higher in the $8 contest compared to the Minimax by the tune of about two points. I think that's pretty interesting. It just helps to let you know and this should be no surprise, as you move up in stakes, the game's gonna get a little bit harder. Now, I wanted to also look at ownership for the people that enter 150 max. So what I did was take the average ownership at the 50K full salary level, because that's where you get the most amount of lineups. How owned are the full 50K lineups in both contests? And this is where, again, we see a huge gap. 221% is the average total ownership for the sub $2 buy-in range, the mini max level. It's 199 as you move up in stakes. So again, what we're seeing here is that the heavy, heavy chalk is being played a lot more in low dollar contest than it is when you move up. Strikes me as a situation where I would want to try to get a little bit different, a little bit less stars and scrubsy in the mini max in comparison to an $8 plus buy-in contest. Now, this was the first place that I was actually surprised when I was doing some of this research. And this is, I think, the biggest piece of this article. I wanted to look at what the difference in fantasy points would be dropping from spending the full 50K to going to 49.9. So spending $100 less, what is the impact to score? And this table, right here that I'm highlighting now explains everything. And I think I understand why. So the average 50K lineup scores two more points in the high dollar than it does in the low dollar. I'm not totally surprised by that, but it's the same at 49.9. Now that I find interesting. Why is the average 50K lineup in the mini max lagging so much in comparison to the other categories in this table. And this is what I think the issue is. Because lineups are so chalky in the mini max in terms of ownership being added together, a lot of people are generating 150 lineups in their optimizer, which is naturally giving them a stars and scrubs build. Now what that stars and scrubs build is actually doing is giving you more low priced guys that aren't very good. And I think you're also seeing a lot of lineups be entered that should not be in the contest because people aren't taking the next step. They're not being sifted through the same way they would be in an $8 or higher contest. So you're seeing guys that maybe have pretty big error bars on their projections coming in lower. So for every $10,000 Russell Westbrook you're trying to play in the mini max with high ownership, that means you're trying to grab a comparable guy at a low salary to try to make that work. And I think that's penalizing your scoring in contests like the mini max because you're getting two stars in scrubsy. I think that's what we're seeing as you move up in up to like the $8 contest where the scores are higher. They're higher because I think people are doing less stars and scrubs, building a little bit more balance, which is bringing your fantasy point level up a bit. So my thought process now for people playing the mini max, try to dial back your stars and scrubs mentality. I think you'll see a little bit more success 
with a balanced build. And this is why I wanted to detail this. This is what I'm trying to, this, this, I think this example on the screen explains it best. These were the two sum of the average ownerships here. 225 on one, 199 in the other. That's what we had uh, up here a little bit. So I wanted to show that difference. And this is what you're seeing. You're getting that higher overall ownership in this column on the right. You know, two 45% owned guy to a 40% owned guy. And then you're grabbing a bunch of like 15 percenters. So your grand total of ownership is higher than it would be if you built a fully balanced lineup like I'm showing here on the left. However, the likelihood of it being duplicated is essentially the same. So you're getting all of this extra ownership, but both of the you're just as likely to be duped with each one of these lineups. You can find that by taking one divided by the product of all of the ownerships. So right now, this is a one in 68,267 lineup. So you'd expect it to be duplicated once in that amount of times. On this side, one in 69,000. Those are essentially the same numbers, but you're obviously getting there in two different ways. The ownership on the right, higher in the aggregate by adding it together, but just as likely to be duped. And this is where I think you're seeing the issues. I think by being a little bit more balanced, you can raise the overall package of your lineups. If you're running crunches in Fantasy Cruncher, and you're trying to play 150 lineups in the minimax, make sure you're running a crunch for more than 150 lineups. Otherwise, the bottom few lineups that get in to your 150 are going to be subpar negative EV lineups. And you're actually, you're costing yourself some money in the long term by not optimizing a little bit. Crunch out some additional lineups, delete some of the very highly owned lineups, because I think you're going to see too much ownership and the wrong style of build for that content. Now I get it, this is a lot of information here. Uh, I'm gonna add more data to this to see if there's any additional conclusions as the NBA season ends. So feel free to reach out on Slack if you are a premium sub at Awesomeo. Shoot me an email, josh at awesomeo.com. Uh, reply in the comments section to this article if you have any questions or if you have any other thoughts for something that you want to see me dig into. I want to get a little bit deeper into the advanced analytics for the NBA moving forward. This is going to be step one. I'm excited to see what step two, three, four, five, etc. look like. But let me know. If you guys have any thoughts, let me know in YouTube comments as well. If you want to see me dig into some details, I'm happy to tackle any topic. I hope that this helps you a little bit as the NBA comes back this Thursday.